America's earliest inhabitants and its new settlers traveled under their own steam or harnessed the power of nature or animals to move from place to place. But the use of steam power in transportation in the early 19th century allowed people to transcend nature's limits, to go faster and further and carry more than ever. Inventors and entrepreneurs alike tinkered with steam engines, looking for ways to use steam power to move passengers and cargo. Robert Fulton launched the first commercially successful steamboat service on the Hudson River in 1807. In a few years, steamboats were churning their way up and down American rivers and along the coast carrying thousands of passengers and tons of cargo. By the middle of the century, ships crossing the ocean were also powered by steam, drastically reducing travel time. A journey that would have taken more than five weeks in 1800 took just 18 days in mid-century and only five by its end. The first commercial railroads began operating in the 1830s. American inventors modified British designs, devising more efficient and faster locomotives. Engineers built bridges and tunnels and laid tens of thousands of miles of track. By 1890, railroads hauled more than half a billion passengers and over 690 million tons of cargo. Steam locomotives were lauded as the best and most powerful means of transport between cities and over long distances. Within cities, however, they were seen as dangerous and were often banned by municipal authorities. Instead, carriages and streetcars transported residents around the city. By the end of the 19th century, steam engines in the bellies of ships and locomotives had changed the landscape and the lives of Americans. But it would not be long before a new kind of engine and a new mode of transport would capture the hearts and minds of farmer and city dweller alike. In the first half of the century, inventors harnessed new kinds of power to both old and new kinds of transportation. Electric motors and internal combustion engines harnessed the power of tiny explosions to pump pistons that power boats, trolleys, trains, automobiles, and airplanes. Most railroad locomotives still ran on steam, but in the 1920s, railroads began to experiment with other forms of power. Some electrified their tracks and locomotives, and others introduced diesel engines, which used the high temperature of compressed air to create ignition. Early versions of the automobile were fueled by steam and electricity, as well as gasoline but two factors helped push gasoline-powered cars to the head of the pack. Internal combustion engines were lighter and more efficient than their steam counterparts, and new oil discoveries meant a steady and bountiful supply of cheap gasoline. These new vehicles were primitive at first. They had to be hand-cranked to start, and many of the features we take for granted, such as lights and turn signals, weren't included in the original package. After 1919, the self-starting engine made automobiles easier to use, and in the 1920s, all-weather travel became possible when closed cars became the norm and features such as heaters were added. The internal combustion engine not only propelled people down the road, it sent them skyward as well. Thanks to a homemade engine and two hand-carved propellers, Orville Wright took the first flight in 1903. He was airborne for 12 seconds. Five years later, with a new and improved airplane, he and his brother Wilbur flew for over an hour. In the next 50 years, advances in aeronautical design and piston engines made it possible for pilots to fly higher, faster, and farther. The jet engine took planes to new heights, providing a smoother and faster ride. The diesel engine replaced the steam engine in trains, and in cars, new electronic devices controlled ignition, combustion, and exhaust. But more than mechanical wizardry, it was computers that transformed transportation in the late 20th century. In cars, they controlled the transmission, temperature, and even helped drivers apply the brakes. Advanced computer systems and air traffic control tracked 32,000 flights per day. They helped control trains and urban mass tra transit systems. Radar and new navigational technologies made ship travel safer. Dispatchers managed more trucks with increased efficiency. Computers hooked into satellite systems kept track of every barge, every train, every truck, and even every package in the system. As for the future, who knows what it holds? Perhaps rocket ships and transporters to beam us across town. What is clear is that technology will continue to change transportation and transportation will continue to change our lives.